we live in Long Beach and love all the diversity and culture the city has to offer. Recently, the New York Post ranked Long Beach number four on its list, the best places to live in the U.S. There are many colorful parades and festivals. Great local restaurants, neighborhood coffee shops, and unique stores. An extensive bike path system that goes along the beach and throughout the city. Also, we get out to enjoy nature at all the parks and beaches. And we like to find community activities in the Long Beach and LA area that are inexpensive or free. Come along as we explore the city. This is our urban adventure. LBC residents have many choices when it comes to eating healthy. In this first segment, we explore the vegan foodie scene. Next, we sat down with Justin Rudd, founder of Rosie's Dog Beach and the 30 Minute Beach Cleanup. Hey, good job. Thank you guys. Last is our Get Fit LBC segment, featuring Yoga on the Bluff, the 7th Wave Surf Shop, Doug at Long Beach United Boxing Club, and Mimi Masher with the Bayshore Rink Party. There are many choices here in Long Beach for vegetarian and vegans. I first stopped by Steamed with my friend Ken, a longtime vegetarian. Are you hungry, Ken? I'm very hungry. How is it? Uh, the LBQ. It's got a little bit of everything in it. Oh, LBQ. Okay. We do have a vegan cheese, oh. and you can do that in replace of any cheese that we have. So you can make any of our quesadillas vegan by doing no sour cream and the vegan pot. When people seem to really care about making your food and, and care about the ingredients and it's just... You can feel the love. I think. I think so. It's that way all the way around. He spoke to me about how hard it was to be a vegetarian in the past. I started in my very early 20s, 20, 21, oh. 22, something like that. So it's been more so than 30 like years. years. Yeah, <laughs> like 5, 10 years. It's been like 30 plus years. It's a lot easier now than it used to be. You can even, if you in Southern California anyway, it's everywhere. Everybody offers something. So was your meal satisfying, Kim? I hated it. It was terrible. <laughs> it was really good. The Grain Cafe has just opened a second location in Belmont Heights featuring 100% vegan Mexican food. The Fiesta plate for two looked amazing. This is the mole, I think this is the chiller, you know, this is the uh, not chicken enchilada. <laughs> And to complete your meal, they have beautiful vegan desserts. The hip pea on Retro Row is vegan falafel. Yeah, my name is Christian. I'm one of the owners here of the Hippie. Uh, my partner is Vary, and she's the Israeli side of our falafel house here. 
and uh, it was just kind of her dream of hers to, uh, to open a falafel shack, just like you would find out there in Israel or in the Middle East. We do our own falafel, we do our own, hum our own hummus, uh, in-house, everything's done in-house. How we present it here is three ways. It's either pockets, cones, or boxes. No matter how you get it or what you choose, you'll get falafel one way or the other. We do feature sauces here. We feature a pickled mango sauce called Amba, and it's kind of like a curry because of the turmeric in it. It's, if you want to make it a spicy hummus, we have shata, which is a Middle Eastern style red pepper sauce. This is our regular tahini, uh, and uh, this is like garlic, lemon, what you like in tahini, and it's a thicker style of it because most places dilute it, kind of a cheaper version. We, we're, we don't hold out on our tahini here. Retro Row, where there is a lot of, there is a huge vegan presence, and uh, uh, and we're happy that we can serve that community as well, serve everyone else. Next, we visited Sura, Korean barbecue and tofu house. Brandon and Claire spoke to us about some of their vegan dishes. It's not fusion per se, but it's we've we've adapted um, vegan version of it. So we put tofu in it. And I've actually never seen another restaurant that has pibing pop with cute tofu in it. That's one of the things that you can get here as a vegan customer. shiitake mushroom. Here's that seasoned bean sprouts. Top it off with some tofu. And on to the diamond. For non-vegans, they can add an egg. It's, it's sizzling. <laughs> Yeah, the name of the dish is called pibimbap, and it actually means mixed rice. Or mixed rice. Oh, so this is a vegan dish. We use sliced shiitake mushrooms. That's our vegan aioli with it. Okay. This would be like your typical Korean spread at a table. Hi. Ahemsa in the East Village is a vegan restaurant with a fun bohemian vibe. My friend Lauren got the veggie BLT with tempeh bacon. And I got the delicious kale bowl. Under the Sun is a beautiful new restaurant in downtown. It offers Long Beach raw vegan food. I'm the owner of Under the Sun uh, Raw Vegan Cafe here in Long Beach, California, and also Rainbow Juice is right next door, so if you ever get the craving for something really healthy, organic, delicious, and raw, come visit us here. Um, 
I love being in Long Beach. I love downtown. I love how things are changing and growing every single day. We've got new amazing local food, which I'm a huge supporter of. You'll see in our marketplace a lot of local um, vendors and people doing teas and herbal blends. We have delicious desserts. We have breakfast. It's really good. We had to drive to LA to go find a lot of the foods that we wanted to eat. And because we are very um, pure and raw and organic and we love getting uh, food from the farmer's market, it's a lot of care that goes into making these products. So we make absolutely everything that goes into it. So if you see a raw wrap, we made the wrap. We made the sauce that goes in it. It is all raw vegan. We took the time to make the salsa, the cheese even, a cultured cheese and everything that goes into all of our items. It is a, a truly a passion from the heart. And finally, you have to check out Seabirds. Originally started in Orange County, it's the latest vegan restaurant in Long Beach. The purple potato taquitos are the ball, but everything they make is amazing. In this segment, we speak to Justin Rudd, the man who founded Rosie's Dog Beach. Justin also started the 30-minute beach cleanup, which he's been organizing for 18 years. So my name is Justin Rudd, and I'm the executive director of the Community Action Team, and that's a nonprofit that I started here in Long Beach about 18 years ago. The beach cleanups that I organized started was I was teaching beach boot camp classes, and I did that for about 11 years. I was just noticing there was a lot of trash on the beach and we, we were literally jumping over piles of trash when we were running doing our beach boot camp classes and one Saturday I said can you come next Saturday and um, and help me clean up some some of this trash after our beach boot camp and 12 of my students did and then after that cleanup that day for 30 minutes I said can you bring your friends next month and let's do the same thing and they did they brought their friends and the next month they brought their friends and today uh, we have celebrated uh, in June is 18 years of 30 minute beach cleanups. We always do it on the third Saturday of the month. It's always at 10 o'clock. It's always at Granada Avenue. And we have around 100 to 150 volunteers on an average. We welcome individuals, we welcome groups. There's churches and schools and scout organizations, businesses. Uh, for example, UPS Inglewood um, comes regularly with their employees. There's no minimum age, whatever age you want to start helping to clean the beach and start volunteering. We love it and we welcome that. And we do our beach cleanups rain or shine. So even if it's uh, a downpour, we are out there uh, because the, the beach trash never stops. This trash comes down the Los Angeles River and from the San Gabriel River and all the upstream communities. So when people are putting cigarette butts or uh, fast food packaging or uh, styrofoam pieces and it goes into the storm drain into the rivers and then flows down the rivers into the bay here in Long Beach and then um, the because of our break wall the, the trash does not go out to sea and it happens to be right next to Rosie's Dog Beach and Rosie's Dog Beach happens to be within the area that we clean up it's about a one mile stretch and dogs can be off leash during at Rosie's Dog Beach during the 30 minute beach cleanup so Rosie's Dog Beach is named after my first English Bulldog. Her name was Rosie um, and she lived to be 13 years old. She had a red wagon and I would pull her around. She couldn't walk so well, especially in her older years. Um, so I would put her in the red wagon. Rosie was my, my first dog that was indoors. I grew up in Southeast Alabama. We had dogs uh, which were strays. They slept in the pine straw flower beds. They slept in the barn. Um, so I, I never even knew that uh, knew what it was like to have a dog inside or have a dog sleep in your bed or to give a dog kibble. 
So because of Rosie that I got involved with Operation Santa Paws, we collect toys and treats for shelter dogs and cats at Christmas time. It was because of her that I started the Dog Beach, because of her I started the Hot Dog Easter Parade, the Hot Dog Halloween Parade, the Bulldog Beauty Contest. <laughs> And these are all um, nationally recognized events now. I was on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno talking about d um, dog parades and dressing up dogs and raising money for animal welfare agencies. 16 years ago, I started Rosie's Dog Beach and at the time I was living a block away from the dog beach and I wanted to be able to take my bulldog Rosie over there, but it was not legal. So what I did is I went down to the downtown library and to the basement and this was back before you could Google search things and see what city codes were. And I was looking for a way to be able to allow dogs off leash on the beach in a legal way in Long Beach. And I found a city code that said that dogs can be off leash during a special event. So I held a special <laughs> event. So at the next month I did the same thing on a Sunday afternoon, the next month I did the same thing. So today it's four acres and it's off leash all day every day. A summer sunny weekend afternoon, we probably get 200 dogs at one time on that beach in that four acre area. So that's at one time, so probably a thousand or something dogs come through there at a, at a, on a Sunday or a Saturday. Super popular, it's the most popular area of beach uh, year round. Our final segment is Get Fit LBC. We show you some inspiring people and great ways you can get healthy and fit. First, Dharma Shakti shared with us how she started yoga on the bluff. Our mission here at Yoga Lucian Movement is basically to make yoga accessible to everybody. So the bluff is an interesting story. At the time, I was um, a new mom, and I was teaching at many different yoga studios between Seal Beach and Long Beach. And um, I had a lot of friends who wanted to take yoga but couldn't afford to come into the studios regularly. And so I had a bunch of friends that I was talking to about just offering free classes to them once a week. And a friend had recommended that location over there, right on the corner of Ocean and Jim Bush. So we just put the word out with our friends and put some flyers up and let people know. And it started off with maybe two or three people. Um, sometimes nobody would show up, I'd be the only one there. Um, and then it just, it slowly got more consistent and steady. Here we are 10 years later and it's crazy, crazy how big it is. At this point, um, people estimate anywhere from two to 300, 350 people may be out there at any time on Saturday and Sunday. Um, some of the classes during the weekdays are fairly large as well. My yoga training has been really, um, it's been very traditional, but it's also been pretty eclectic and I have some other aspects to myself that I incorporate. So I'm also an Ayurvedic practitioner. Um, which is a sister science to yoga. So I'm, I'm bringing in more of the healing aspect of yoga and not just the exercise aspect of yoga. For me, it's a holistic practice. So we have our beautiful donation-based studio here called Yoga Lucian Movement and Ayurveda. And all of our classes are offered by donation. We have classes seven days a week. You can find us at yogalutionmovement.com and we'll get a bunch of our info out there. Next, we met with Kelly at Seventh Wave Surf Shop. Her dad first introduced her to surfing at the age of 13 and she's been in love with it ever since. She carries many unique products and prides herself in supporting local vendors. interact and choose who I'm working with and why. So like, you're awesome, you're making a cool product, let's do something. And I try to source like, you know, a, a variety of boards. Like this is our progressive quad fish. So like this is a narrower high performance board and a fish has like a fuller outline. It's normally usually, you know, a little thicker um, and it's got the swallow tail. Um, 
The low fog glassing glasses are, are brand surfboards and they also glass this one. The A6 World Series of Volleyball that comes to town every year, I do their, their boards for their trophies. Oh, that's cool. So it's a four plus one, you need to write four fins or single fin. The fin setup changes how a board rides dramatic, dramatically. So basically this board has a quad, we call that quad four fins, or if I took those fins out and just put one longer fin in the middle, it'll be like a whole new board. So even though board prices continue to go up, so does innovation. And with that, you don't have to buy cheap board. So we got new and used. Like this is another one of my new ones with my shop. My shop brand of new ones. So this is like a classic, like it's an oh, old yeah. school log. You know, glassed in fin. You got a three quarter inch. This is solid redwood stringer. She also has awesome Fourth Friday events. Next, we sat down with Doug McKinnon. A local resident with a unique history and owner of Long Beach United Boxing Club. Hi, I'm Doug McKinnon. I own Long Beach United Boxing Club. I originally came to Long Beach in 1986. I grew up in Boston. Uh, I was part of the Boston hardcore scene. I played drums and I was really, really fascinated with California since I was a kid. You know, like everyone out here, it was like, a surfer, skateboarder, BMX rider, everyone knew karate, drove custom vans and low riders and hot rods. And to me, it was just the greatest place that I'm like, oh, as soon as I graduate high school, I want to move out there and I want to get into a band, learn how to surf and just live the whole California dream. I bought a little Toyota truck, threw everything I owned in it and just drove west. And after I was here a few months, I met Joe Escalani, who was playing drums in the Vandals told him that I was here to be a drummer in a punk band and he found it very intriguing that I would just do everything I owned in a truck and move to California <laughs> to be a drummer in a punk band. He said, hey, you know what? I think I can help you with that. We'll audition if you can learn our songs. You know, we'll go, we'll go from there. Uh, that's kind of how I met everybody in Long Beach and became uh, a Long Beach resident. And then I, I ended up moving to Miami. There was a boxing gym there that I went to, and I'm like, oh, I'll just work out. Right. So I'm working out, and the owner of the gym comes up to me and says, hey, you have some experience. I'm like, yeah, you know, I fought amateur. And I said, well, I got a great idea. This gym that you're in now is not your average boxing gym. This is going to be a boxing gym where we run boxing classes and we train just the general public how to, you know, be a fighter without actually fighting. And uh, it's just for fitness. And it's in, but the trainers have to have been people that have fought and know correct technique. You know, I'm out surfing with one of my buddy, uh, Eric Sandin, uh -huh. who I knew uh, through the music scene. He plays drums in a band called No Effects. He had come by the gym that I was working at, and I remember him saying, wow, this is a really good idea. This is a great, you know, new theory. He's like, yeah, imagine if you move back to Long Beach, we should do a gym like this. And then we're surfing, and I was complaining about the commute. I was complaining about not having enough clients. And, uh, and Eric said, well, I guess it's time we do that gym we talked about. And I was like, I was like oh, you, you, you were serious about that? And so I said, all right, let's go for it. And uh, yeah. I wanted to have a lot of options. I wanted the overall curriculum to be just about learning sport of boxing, kickboxing, and jujitsu for fitness with the option to compete if you so desire. Right. That's but awesome. there's no pressure in, involved, you know, you can stay in those bag classes, and most people do.
I have a big kids program here, which um, I always ran the kids program at the gym in, in Miami. Uh, I was a school teacher when I graduated uh, right. Cal State. That makes sense. And I wor and, but I worked in, in a, uh, a special ed program for kids that had behavioral problems okay. here at Jefferson Middle School. And I loved it. And when I started doing the training at the gym, I ran the kids program. And I loved it. So I made sure that when we opened uh, this gym, that the kids program was a big, big part of it. parent to come in they said uh, our son has um, autism he keeps walking by the gym he keeps looking he sees all the kids in here and he's been bugging us bugging us would you mind if he if he tried the class and see if you can follow along right. and I'm like absolutely bring him in he comes in and um, yeah his gait was all kind of messed up his coordination wasn't there obviously uh, the focus was an issue right but um, I have great great kids in this uh, in this gym and they were very encouraging to him I've never been trained to, to um, know how to deal with autism. Yes. Um, so I was just kind of, you know, doing the best I could, and uh, he ended up starting to, little by little, his coordination got better, mm -hmm. his gait got better, even his speech, his communication got better. Right, right. And it was like one of the most rewarding things. Is I'm like, well, not only if I like figured out how to like get him to throw a jab, cross the right way, and you know, stand in the right position. He's, he's actually, you know, me socializing at a different level right. than when he came in here. And to me, that was that was probably the, my biggest accomplishment as far as training so many. Last, we feature Mimi Masher and her Bayshore Rink Party. A fun way for LBC to get fit. My name is Mimi Masher and I've been working with girls in roller sports since 2006. I was playing roller derby with Long Beach Roller Derby in 2011 and I got hurt. Um, in order to stay relevant with the league, I started helping out with the juniors and eventually we added a roller rink night. It used to be on Mondays. I've been doing that for about three years. Um, you can find us online, bayshorerinkparty.com. It is from 6 to 8 p.m. every Thursday. Every third Thursday we have a theme night. We're open to all ages. Um, I love when the little kids come. It is $5 to get in. I really just like to be there for the kids. I like to impact their lives for the better. That's where I have the most effect. I can change their mindset. I can change the way they think or the way they see themselves. We basically show up every Thursday, turn up the music, and we skate, we play games, um, just like a good old-fashioned indoor rink. It is situated right on the beach, and it's super amazing. The weather is fantastic. You can hear the ocean. You can smell the salt in the air. And um, one of my favorite things is your kids can go play outside and be safe. Hi, we're Alice and Steve from Our Urban Adventure. Thank you for watching the show. For more information about our show and Long Beach, go onto our website, oururbanadventure.com. Thanks for watching.